You know, there's two kinds of landowners in the state of Texas, those with feral hogs and those that are about to have feral hogs. But one of the common questions we get is, how did this feral hog population explosion occur and where did feral hogs come from? Well, feral hogs have been in the state of Texas since about 1565. So for over 450 years, we've had a population established here. And unfortunately, we believe we've got one of the largest feral hog populations found anywhere in the United States at about 2.6 million animals. Now, some 40 states in the United States have feral hog populations, but certainly few, if any, have the same population levels that we have. So what happened to cause this population explosion of feral hogs? Well, it began in the early to mid-1980s through a combination of factors. And of course, the feral hog is an exotic species, an old world species that is native to Europe and Asia, not native to the New World, or certainly not native to North America, first brought over by the explorers. Well, these populations were here in the state for many, many years, but a few factors combined to make a perfect storm that started in those early to mid-1980 periods. This included a number of clandestine stockings where uh, individuals would trailer load hogs and release them at new sites. We also supplement many of our native wildlife species such as white-tailed deer, and anytime feral hogs have access to that supplement, that it causes increases in populations and uh, makes uh, the sows produce more eggs, have larger litters, and more of those pigs in that litter survive. But we're talking about the most highly reproductive large mammal found worldwide. So you provide good food, you move them and establish them, even though it's illegal, into new areas of the state, and that native natural rate of reproduction being as high as it is, you've got the perfect storm to create a population explosion of feral hogs. Texas is cattle country, and uh, one of the most common complaints we get from Texas landowners in our state is the damage that feral hogs cause to the pastures and the hay meadows uh, that we rely on for forage production for our beef cattle. Pasture damage, one of the biggest complaints we get from landowners in the state of Texas is pasture damage that uh, feral hogs do to the grazing areas of our livestock, primarily beef cattle. In fact, 75% of our survey respondents indicate that pasture damage is common on their property. And that's unfortunate because to put this ground back into production, it'll cost this particular landowner about $260 an acre. And that's lost forage time and that drives up the production costs for beef cattle. Damage comes in many forms. It's damage to agriculture, uh, conservatively estimated at over $50 million annually in the state of Texas, but could range much higher than that, maybe up in the three to $400 million range, and that certainly does not include the suburban and urban damage that's becoming more and more commonplace in the state of Texas. You know, recreational hunting for feral hogs has become a, a favorite pastime among many Texans and many out-of-staters that, that like to come to Texas because of our large population. But the truth of the matter is recreational hunting, sport hunting alone, is just not sufficient to control our feral hog populations in the state of Texas. Uh, there's been about a dozen studies done on the impacts of recreational hunting to feral hog populations in the United States. And typically, recreational hunting removes approximately 24% on average of a population annually. The simple truth is we need to be removing between 60 and 70% of a feral hog population just to keep it stable from one year to the next. So although recreational hunting is a tool, by itself it's not sufficient to hold our feral hog populations in check in Texas.
the major questions we get from landowners throughout the state of Texas is how can I effectively abate damage on my property caused by feral hogs. One of the major methods that we recommend to landowners is that they consider trapping as their first line of defense. Now, it's important to be successful with trapping that you use the best management practices recommended. And we use many corral trap type designs. You'll notice this trap is teardrop shaped and that helps us facilitate loading out hogs into a trailer away from the capture site. In the state of Texas, we can sell the hogs that are live captured to buying stations and then those pigs and hogs eventually end up into the human food chain both in the United States as well as for export to Europe and Asia. As you can see there are several different gate designs that are available for use on traps. We have a saloon door gate here, we have a router gate design here and a little further you see a swinging door gate design and landowners should use whatever gate they're comfortable with using on their trap. The, the process of trapping is what is really important. And trapping feral hogs is a process and not an event. One of the tools we use to increase the efficacy of our trapping is the use of remote sensing cameras. Uh, these are generally called game cameras by many landowners. They're used by hunters but these little devices are a wonder of technology. And what the remote camera allows us to do in our trapping exercise is first and foremost, it gives us an idea of the number of hogs in that particular group, which is called a sounder. The reason that's important is that gives us a hint as to the size of trap we need to build in order to capture that entire sounder. We don't want to catch a few of the hogs. We don't want to catch most of the hogs. We want to catch as many of the hogs in that sounder in one attempt as possible. So if we look at our camera data, determine how many hogs are responding to bait before we ever construct the trap, it'll give us a really good idea of the size of the trap that we need to build. Secondly, the camera can be used that once our trap is constructed, we'll use the camera to determine when those hogs are on bait when they're comfortable with going into the trap and going all the way back to the trigger mechanism and then and only then when we have those data provided by our camera will we know when we can set the trap and indeed be successful at catching a high percentage of the feral hogs responding to that bait. Okay, welcome inside what we believe is a fairly innovative feral hog trap design. This is what we refer to as our figure eight design where we actually have two different gates, one on each end and then a gate in the middle to where we can move all the hogs into this cell and load the hogs out. The idea behind a trap like this is simply that if you have multiple sounders of hogs visiting a bait site uh, during a night that you can capture one sounder on one end of the trap once the gates close there, another sounder can come around to the other gate, which is still open on the far end of the trap in the other cell, and you can capture multiple sounders from basically one trap design. So this is just one of, of several uh, topics that we're addressing and experimenting with as we try to abate damage caused by feral hogs in Texas. What we really want to do in the state of Texas is slam the door on feral hog populations. 